Hello? Can you guys hear me? Are we there? What's up? Yeah, everybody else talks, so I know. Kylie, you there? Hi, Hi. yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Awesome. I'm just getting my burrito going. That's what I'm doing. Uh -huh. I'm so excited. All right, welcome, guys. Welcome back. Tim, I haven't seen you in like three months. Yeah, it's great welcome to see you. Live I Kylie, welcome to the Hi. live stream. Uh, hi guys, my name is Devin. I'm the event director at Denver Beer Co. This is your first time on our live streams. Welcome. We're so excited to have you. If you've been before, welcome back. We're also excited to have you. We have Tim with us today from Coda Coffee, who brought us our delicious coffee we're going to talk about here in a minute. I'm literally on my like fourth cup this morning, so it's pretty <laughs> I got my Coda mug, Tim. Thanks. I use it all the time. And we have Kylie Beer. So you might recognize her from Nine News. Hi, Kylie. Hello. How's, How's it going? Thank you for joining us today. I'm so excited. I can't think of a better way to brunch. This is awesome. Ah, perfect. Yes. Virtually brunch with a bunch of our friends all over the place. Yes. <laughs> so I have a confession to make. Yes. I have to apologize to Timber, Tinder Belly Bacon in advance. We, uh, oh, no. we, had to, we had our gas shut off Thursday night. So I have to microwave my bacon. No. But that is uh that's where we're at in, in wow. the I don't know if I've ever microwaved bacon. I'm sure people do it. It works. It's, good. it's, it's good. Good. Yeah, I'm an oven guy. There's like, you know, we've talked about this before, right? There's pan wow. people, there's frying people, and there's oven people. And then I guess there's the microwave guy, which is me today. So I'm throwing mine on the Traeger this morning. So I like a little kind of smoke wow. situation. How do you like that? that? Mine's the best bacon I've ever had. It's really? Like, yeah. I just tossed mine in the oven like a couple minutes ago, so I need to not forget about it. But we'll see how that goes. Um, um, so quick little housekeeping before we get going. If you have some coffee, maybe it'll be time to get drink that now. Um, as we know, we normally have our head brewer with us, Jason, and he is actually on a camping trip with his family right now. It's fall break for a lot of kids in Colorado. Normally, uh, September and October are like our busiest, well, summer and it's all busy, but usually we have Great American Beer Festival. It's hosted here in Denver. I'm sure most people watching do know that. Um, and obviously the festival did not take place in person. It was virtual this year. So when we start to do a lot of events, it's like the craziest 10 days of Denver Beer Week. Um, so Jason's fall break for his kids. He's usually like crazy wrapped up in work. So he was super excited that this fall break, they got to go on a camping trip. So they're actually out of service um, for the past like four days or something like that. The crazy part about that was last night was the Great American Beer Festival Virtual Awards. Um, and I'm so excited to announce, for those that don't know, that Denver Beer Co. actually won two medals. Um, yeah, so sure. and he actually, I don't think he knows yet because he's not coming back to service till tomorrow night. So we can get right. calls and text messages. Um, so can we like drink to that real quick? Yes. Drink to that. We'll drink that. We'll start with that. Cheers. Here. Well, uh -huh. Cheers to that. So we won, um, a silver medal for Amarano Graham Cracker Porter. Oh, there's our beautiful uh, image there. And then we won a gold medal for uh, Amarano Dream. And for those of you that may not know what Amarano is, like me, up until like a year or two ago, two things to note. It is a uh, bark of a tree from Brazil. Oh, cool. And it kind of creates like cinnamony and nutmeg flavor from the beer. Uh, and the cool part about that is we actually won this gold medal for Amarano last year in 2019 as well. So this beer is amazing. This flavor that Jason um, has started to put in beers actually came from a, I'm probably going to, I'm going to try to say this right. It came from a collaboration we did with a brewery down in Brazil. And since then, Jason has just loved this ingredient. And there's nothing else in this beer besides this root and then, uh, or excuse me, this bark and then everything, uh, not, no other additional spices or anything. So watch for that to come back. I think we're dropping it in the next couple of weeks in um, Crowlers. So watch for those gold medal and silver medal winning beers to come back on your shelf. So for beer co team, awesome. oh yes, there, that is last, last year. That is last year winning the gold medal for Amarano Dream as well. GBF was a little bit different. We actually watched it 
virtually and we had a fun little zoom going with a, a bunch of people watching it together from Denver Beer Co. So it was really exciting. And then the second piece of news, which is for me even probably more exciting, is Cerveceria Colorado, our sister brewery, where Jason is also the head brewer, won its first ever GABF medal, a silver for Plabano Pilsner, excuse me, I can't even speak right now, Plabano Pilsner, um, in the chili beer category, which Ooh. is so exciting. It's literally my favorite. I've always been afraid of chili beers. I think we did it. Uh, on our last beer baking coffee, it was one of our beers. That's one of my favorite beers at, at the yes. And now it won our first uh, GABF medal. So three medals in one year. It's the best we've ever done. So congratulations to the whole Denver Beer Coast Raceria team. Jason, we love you. You're amazing. We miss you. You'll be back soon. I can't yeah, wait. Yes. A big high five from across the room because we're not hugging these days. One day we'll hug and we'll celebrate. Oh, yeah. Everything gets back to normal. We're gonna have a huge, huge celebration to celebrate, you know, this like really, really amazing moment in 2020 for Denver Beer Cones Raceria. So I had to start out with all of that, but I think it's time that we dive into our beers we have today and our coffee. And Kylie, we have a bunch of fun questions for you. Oh man. <laughs> on the reporter. Okay. Uh, and we're going to ask you questions. Okay, so. Do we want to start with a beer to start with? I pour Crunchy McBrunch Face. Okay. It is our beer mosa of beer. Uh, we actually did this at our first ever virtual, well, we did this two years ago at our in-house beer baking coffee and our first virtual beer baking coffee. And it's been our mo one of our most requested beers. So we brought it back. So Brunchy McBrunch Face is our take on a beer mosa. It's delicious. Um, so if you want to pour that one up, here's, and let's get a little sip there. Okay. So really, I'm kind of to you in, huh? yeah, we're jumping right in. So Kylie, tell us your role at Nine News, what you do. Yeah. Ooh, that's really good, by the way. I had the chocolate colch in this one, so then Ooh. I tried it straight from the... <laughs> uh, so I am the weekend morning meteorologist at Nine News, so I've actually been up since about 3 o'clock this morning. Yeah. One of my questions. I know. <laughs> it's a little bit weird. Everyone's like, are you crazy? I'm like, a little bit. Uh, so I do that on Saturday and Sunday mornings. We're on air from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., so I get to tell people all about the weather, the forecast. Obviously, a lot of people, I mean, weather's a big deal in Colorado, and right now we're talking about the wildfires and the smoke and all that, so it's a little bit more of a serious tone than my typical, hey, get outside, it's sunny, it's gorgeous, yeah. enjoy beautiful Colorado. Uh, but I also get to do some really fun things, too. Like, I do a weekly food story. So I did a story when you guys did, uh, when Denver Beer Company did the beer uh, that was like the Colorado Heroes. I can't remember. It was like a, a lime. It was delicious. So I got to do yeah, champions. Yes, that's what it was called. Cucumber Lime Lager. It was so good. Yeah, I had a few crawlers and it was with the artist who had been doing those amazing murals all around. So every week I get to feature a different food related story. And it's it's everything. It's kind of like cool people doing cool things during the pandemic. It was, okay, who's helping to try and feed people and, or keep restaurants alive? Who's helping servers while they're, you know, out of work right now? So that was it during the pandemic. Before then, it was like, what's a cool restaurant story? Who's got a cool backstory? And so if you guys ever have one that you want to recommend me to do, please email me. I always am looking for new cool uh, places to show off. And maybe they've been here for 30 years. Maybe they've been here for 30 days. Um, so that's really fun. And then back you know, again, pre-pandemic, I do theater Broadway show reviews too. So I get to have a lot of fun at Nine News yeah. on top of doing the weather, which is, you know, already fun on its own. I love that. Uh, I remember I follow, I follow Nine News on Instagram. And I, remember, <laughs> I think it was last year, uh, Halloween, you guys all dressed up and it was so fun to see the pictures and like the Instagram stories of everybody dressed up like, uh, and I think it was like, a, there was a couple of group costumes, wasn't there? Good yeah, luck. the morning show did, I believe it was Mario Kart. I think yeah, that's what it was. was. It was like print, it's like yeah. print Peach and like Luigi and Mario. And so, yeah, the whole team did that last year, which was so funny. But I, I remember I actually spent Halloween at Denver Beer Co. a couple of years ago when you guys had your pet Halloween costume contest. Yes. It was so, it was one of the best nights ever. Well, it was hilarious. That was my, uh, we've been doing it for, this will be our fifth Halloween. It was one of, uh, the first things that I brought to Denver Beer Co. that was new when I started. And awesome. it was like, <laughs> what did you dress your dog up as? What? What did you dress your dog up as? 
Yeah, uh, the first, oh, I wish we had all these photos. I should have had Maria ready. Um, shout out to Maria, by the way, running everything from the back end. We love you. Um, the first year Harley and I were, uh, she was a Ghostbuster and I was a ghost. Oh, I love that. You have like a good couple's costume with your dog. Um, and then we've done kind of duo costumes ever since. But that was probably the best, the ghost and the Ghostbuster. And she was a little puppy still, and it was really funny. I had like what a kind of dog is she? She's on the back. She's a mutt. Is she around? She's in the backyard right now. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she might make an appearance here in a minute, but usually she'll, you know, make an appearance at some point. But Riley, you got dogs? What? Uh, Kylie, you have dogs? Oh, not yeah. not here in Denver. I've got like two family dogs back home in Arizona. So we've got one little Pomeranian named Tucker. Meanest dog you'll ever meet in your life. He's like 17. We're convinced he's going to live till he's 25. His name is Tucker. You can maybe guess the nicknames that he gets. Uh, and then we've got like a little black lab and I think, what is it? Oh, Greyhound mix named Cooper. Okay. So, the dog, love them, but I live in a little tiny apartment in Denver. So. Yeah. Not totally dog friendly. It makes sense. Yeah, you have a dog, don't you, Tim? Yeah, I got two. Uh, Daisy is a gosh. We just got her tested. She's like ten percent pit bull and a uh, coon water. hound or something. Oh, interesting. All right, I'm looking at my wife. She's like, she's giving me <laughs> mean walker. walker coon hound, and then Boot is a uh, uh, part whippet. I mean, we think they're both rescue dogs. Yeah, uh, and Boot we we think is part whippet, like part uh, German short hair pointer. She's real fast. When we first got her, we had a six foot fence and we lived on 40th and Zuni, so like kind of sunny side area. And she would just jump right over the fence and we're trying to take off. And it was like, what the hell are we going to do with this dog? But she's turned out to be one of the best dogs ever. Oh, I love that. I love that. My dog is also a crazy mutt. She, when I got her, they said she was a terrier shepherd mix. And I was like, okay, no idea what that would be. And she actually, we did the DNA test and she's a, German Shepherd, Rottweiler, Chow Chow, Australian Cattle Dog, and Jack Russell Terrier, and then like three eighths mixed breed because she's like super duper mutt for like five five generation mutt. How cool is it though that you can actually do a DNA test on your dog? Totally yeah. agree. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought it until my wife's like, "We got to do this." I'm like, oh, "Okay." Fine. And then I'm like, "Yeah, this makes sense," and it was actually really interesting. Like, <laughs> um, Tiffany has a question, so I'm gonna jump to that quick. So we started with the beer Mosa, yes, uh, which is our take on a mimosa, orangey. It's an orange IPA. Well, is it called beer Mosa or is it called brunchy? <laughs> You're right. It's called. Excuse me. It's called brunchy McBrunch face. That's my favorite name. Yeah. It's a very fun name. I apologize for not using it. Brunchy McBrunch face. Our take on a beer Mosa, uh, which is just one of you know, it's it's fun. Orange juice and beer. If you ever really need, I feel like in college. When we would start drinking beers before football games at like 9 a.m., you'd put like tomato juice or orange juice and just in your, you know, really good beer and start going. So this is a little upscale from that. But it's a really great breakfast beer. It's really good. It is really I've tried breakfast beer before. It's good to start with. Sorry, we're laughing over here because my microwave experiment with the bacon didn't. didn't, didn't Thank you. <laughs> That's okay. It didn't work. Well, I mean, I just might have like left it in the microwave a little bit too long. Oh no! My, I know. My this is is absolutely amazing, and I'm like oh, really, yeah. really bummed. <laughs> my wife's teasing me. It's not. That doesn't look too bad. It's like edible, kind of. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait, you some bacon? Oh, it's too hot. Okay, I'll show my bacon off. It just came off the trigger like two seconds ago. Right. How do you do that? Can I ask so you about that? Like, oh, hold on. How do you, how do we do that? <laughs> Just put the Traeger on and then you put it in tin foil and what you do, 30 minutes? Till it's done. Till it's done. But like, uh, do you know what temperature by chance? Do you know what temperature on high? Yeah, we just put it on high. So the Traeger, 425. You, 425, you just literally, like, no. I don't, I, I'm still a little bit new to it, but yeah, you just turn it up, I think, to the highest setting and then throw it in there. It's okay. the easiest grill in the world. Like, I, I can save my life and somehow I can figure it out. You know, I'm jealous. <laughs> oh, here's bacon. Oh my gosh. Did not burn. Uh -uh. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. It's so good. I'm going to grab some, too. Oh, we didn't see bacon. That was in our in-house bed. Sorry, I muted for a minute because I pulled my bacon out in the fire alarm usually goes off. It's, it's awful. It's just like, this is so good. 
Yeah. It's not what Tender Belly deserves. Oh. Sorry? The microwave is not what Tender Belly deserves. No. <laughs> so, no. And I apologize. Yeah. Tender Belly Bacon, who provides us with all of our bacon for this event, it's literally the best bacon I've ever had. Okay. It's like I can't eat any other bacon now. And if I'm ever at, we were recently just at a restaurant, I don't remember where I was, somewhere in Park Hill, and it said tender belly bacon on a sandwich. And I was instantly like, well, I'm going to get that. Nothing else on the menu matters anymore. So if you're ever anywhere and you see tender belly on a menu or you see it in your stores, grab it. You know, Costco has it right now and like really big, large packs that you can take home. So Ooh, that's tender okay. belly. thank you guys for uh, getting us all this delicious bacon. I'm so excited to eat it. I, I So when I moved here, like two and moved back two and a half years ago, it, I don't know when Tender Belly became like a household name in Denver, but like people were like, we'd be out to eat and they'd be like, oh no, no that has Tender Belly on it. And I was like, what is, what is Tender Belly? And like, now it's just like, oh, in the same way I order it. I'm like, yes. It really yeah. does make a difference. Like it is like a better cut. So delicious. Mm. Kylie, are you from Colorado? So I went to school at Boulder. Mm -hmm. And then, but I'm not, it's so funny. I'm not really from anywhere. I've got a family that's from Boston. And then I moved every three years growing up. So I've never lived anywhere more than four years, but Colorado is always the place that felt most like home. I think because of going to Boulder and after Boulder, I went to like Idaho and Salt Lake City and Minneapolis. And then I was like, I need to get back to Colorado. I love the mountains. What part of Idaho? I was in Idaho Falls. So if you, yeah. it's Eastern Idaho. People normally know Boise, but yeah. I was um, just a quick little drive about an hour to Jackson Hole, which was like pretty cool for a couple of years to live right there. Yep. That is cool. My folks have a place in uh, outside of Sandpoint, so like north, very north, Panhandle. Oh, it's so gorgeous up there, like yeah. kind of by Coeur d'Alene. Yep, yep. Wow. So we'll take a week out there and hang out. They're they're close to Lake Ponderé, and we'll do that. That's so cool. Where Tim, where are you originally from? Uh, Seattle, or outside oh. of Seattle. I grew up there, and then my wife and I migrated out to Colorado in 2004, I think. Then you fell in love and never left. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. I love Washington state. It's like, it's so pristine. It's a really neat part of the world. You just yeah. can't enjoy it because of the weather, you know? And so Colorado kind of has the same to offer, but you can enjoy it all the time because of the weather. So we're really happy here. Oh, good. I, mean, I started my company in 2005. So at that point we, we had, you know, deep roots and we weren't going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. I love that. How did you guys get started? Um, so I got into coffee Let's see, in 1996, uh, I was three. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> worked, for a, worked for a tiny coffee roaster. It was actually my brother's friend's family. They converted an old fruit stand into a gas, or excuse me, it, it was a fruit stand next to a gas station. They converted it into a coffee roaster. And uh, they, when I was 16, they're like, hey, Tim, you want a job sweeping the floors? And so I said, yeah, sure. Started working there. This is in the coffee boom in the Northwest in the mid 90s, kind of right place, right time. So that company blew up and uh, was there running production, you know, running all operations as a roast master. And eventually it was time to make money for ourselves. So with their blessing, we came out to Colorado and became their competitor. But I'm still really close to those guys. They're, they're good friends. I don't know. I feel like you can be like a competitor, but also build each other up and like support each other. Like it's not like there aren't enough people who want coffee out there. You're so, absolutely right. There's <laughs> for everyone. There's a here. ton of good local coffee roasters. You know, Novo Coffee does a great job. Uh, I mean, I can sit here and list like 20 of them. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, it is, you know, friendly, wonderful competition. And, and you're right. There's, everyone drinks coffee. So there's there's plenty of business out there to share for sure. Are those your kids in the back, like right over your right shoulder? <laughs> yep. Cute. So they're actually not here because we don't have heat because we don't have gas. <laughs> Uh, so my dogs aren't here. My kids aren't here. We just showed up. We got our, that's my lovely wife. Hello. And Taylor and AJ. We're all sampling Hello. beer. Oh yeah. Oh, that beer. Welcome. Yep. We'll have to ask, when we ask the favorite beer at the end, we'll have to get their opinions too. So yeah, kids are at grandma and grandpa's with heat. Ah. Yep. Do you have kids? <laughs> Me? No. Nope. No kids. <laughs> That was quick. <laughs> yeah, no hesitation on that one. Yeah. Maybe one day, but definitely not right now. Definitely enjoying running around downtown Denver. It's a lot of fun. They're awesome. My son's eight. My daughter's six. Now, you know, with the pandemic, it's yeah. kind of interesting times, like homeschooling and, and 
just kind of going through that, but uh, we're very lucky. I, I, I got two great kids. I imagine, I mean, I, I can't, I, I imagine that's very difficult, but it's, there's also some really cool memories that are super unique to this time yep. that you wouldn't get if it weren't for this. You're totally right. Yep. Like even, you know, going back to February, March, when things really got locked down, you know, we had a good core of three months where it's just us. Right. And you're exactly right. Like we made a lot of good memories and I will you know, we'll, we'll never forget that in a positive way. <laughs> good. But the flip side of that is I am like kind of ready to like get out and go party and like go night. I know. Go watch a football game or hit the bars or anything. But One we'll, day. We'll get there. Hopefully yeah. soon. My goodness. Yep. Tim, would you tell us a little bit about the coffee that you chose this time? Yeah. So I think we picked a natural, yeah, the Kenya micro lot. Yeah. And that's sort of a nondescript, a micro lot in coffee is, so let me back up a little bit. One thing that Coda does, and one thing a lot of small micro roasters do, is we'll go out to coffee growing communities and choose like a specific lot of coffee that we really like, maybe from a farmer's backyard that's, you know, no bigger than half an acre or something. And in that moment, there's a lot, there's an opportunity to really help that farmer, right? You can A, pay them a lot more money for their coffee, B, like buy them uh, certain items that can help better produce coffee. So I think on one of those slides was some coffee cherries going into a deep pulper. Mm. So that's a common thing. We'll do at Origin. That's me in Ethiopia. Cool. That we're, we're benefiting. Uh, so there's, I mean, there's a, I could sit here and ramble on about it. There's a slew of different things that we can do. But this coffee, why it's so special, Kenya and really Africa has God-given talent to grow good coffee. They, they have really good soil and amazing coffee comes out of there. And I uh, went to Kenya in October and we tried to do something different. So when we produce coffee, it comes from a cherry. We take that fruit away. It's the only fruit where we take the seed and throw away the fruit. And, uh, and then we will soak it in what's called a fermentation tank, basically a big pool of water. And enzymes will eat away the last little bit of fruit that we can't take mechanically. So that's called washed. Well, this is a natural, and it's very rare to find a natural Kenyan. So a natural, you actually let that fruit just dry right onto the seed. It's really the easiest way to produce coffee, but it, it, the result can be it gives you the lowest floor so you can really screw it up or the highest ceiling. <laughs> I've been wanting to do a natural Kenya for a long time, and we've experimented a little bit with it in the past, but this is the first time where we got like 50 bags from Kenya, 50 bags uh, being 60 kilos a piece to you know really run commercially. And it tastes pretty good. Naturals will... They have like more fruity aspects, so almost like a dried fruit roll-up like taste. I don't know if you guys get that or not, but um, there's just more uh, more red fruit forward than than your typical cup of coffee. Well, I'm so surprised. That, like, am I the only person that, that's surprised by hearing about fruit and coffee? Like, you know, I'm seeing grapefruit, and you say like green grape on the front. Like, are there a lot of coffees that do this, or is that kind of specific to like that region of the world? Excellent question. And there are a lot of coffees that can do this. You can get a really good natural process Guatemalan and you could produce similar results. Um, it just, it depends on the care and time taken in the bean. I mean, coffee is such like a normal part of our lives. And I, this is coming from this ridiculous geeky coffee guy. So <laughs> no, I love it. Me, but and it's yeah. typically more of an ingredient in a recipe, right? We, we don't just have coffee. We have creamer or sugar or lots of other things. Well, there is, amazing coffee out there if you just try it by itself and if it's produced properly you know you have to brew it right there's a whole slew of things that you can do but yes the the short answer is there are a ton of amazing coffees that can have goofy fruit notes that that the average person would recognize you know you don't have to be a professional taster to see that it's just that i coffee doesn't have that opportunity to really shine in the world yet but i'm i'm trying it's you're doing a great job. I mean, I, every I feel like every time I try a different coffee with our beer baking coffee, I'm like, ooh, I like this one. This is my favorite. This is my new favorite. This is my new favorite. They're all so delicious. And you do, you get the little fruit notes. And I remember when I saw this one, I was like, ooh, grapefruit. Like, it's gonna be interesting, but it's so <laughs> delicious. Yep. It's just like it's and it it ties so so well. And I know you and Jason make coffee beers all the time, which we don't have one this time, which we don't have Jason here to talk about it. So I'm thankful for that. But it's, it's interesting to hear you talk about the process because it is similar to like how we do craft beer. You're basically doing kind of craft coffee. It's a whole, yeah, it's a whole goofy world that I'm stoked to be a part of. 
<clears throat> and it's fun to have a platform to, you know, show the public about it. Cause I don't think people realize that, Oh, coffee is actually a red or yellow fruit from a tree. <laughs> you know, then we I take it away and it's a seed. Like, you know, most people think it's Juan Valdez on his donkey picking roasted beans. <laughs> <laughs> so those are coffee. Those are coffee berries. Berries. Yep. Coffee berries. So they're a berry. There's their fruit. Yep. So honestly, like, are there any beans in this coffee? Like, do we take yeah, so, the beans? So the beans that you recognize are the two yeah. beans in those cherries. Got it. And then we, there, we call them green beans when they come to us. They're sort of green in color. And then we roast it. It goes through the mallard reaction, which is how, like, how you brown steak or why bread turns brown and uh, beans turn brown. And uh, then it's roasted. It, we, in our industry, we call it turning shit brown. <laughs> Shit, <laughs> brown. Okay, yep. okay. I love that. Okay, I have one more coffee question before we move on to the next beer. Shoot. Um, and this kind of came up when we were talking about how you know supporting other local coffee roasters, or just everybody can support each other. And I know in the beer industry, we do a lot of uh, collaborations where two breweries will work together and make a beer and then promote it together. Have you guys ever done that in the coffee industry? Is that like a thing where two coffee roasters? I know you said Nova has great coffee. Like, has Coda yeah. and Nova ever made a coffee together? We have and we haven't. So I would love to. It's, I, you know, I, but I don't know if coffee has that like polarizing feel like beer does. I mean, you could start, we could all say beer kicks ass. You know, that's, you know, <laughs> if anyone feels that way about coffee. Coffee's more of a tool to like get you through the day. And oh, I, I wake up with a lot of people around 3 a.m. and they all, you know, coffee kicks ass. Yeah. <laughs> coffee kicks ass. <laughs> So I'd be totally open to that. I will say that, so right now Boyers had a horrible fire and uh, they're using our, they rent our facility at night, Boyers Coffee Roasters. So I, I mean, I guess you'd call that a collaboration. You know, we called up Jason and Doug, the owner right away and <clears throat> reached out and just said, Hey, look, you know, let's, let's help you guys. Like this sucks. <laughs> In a global pandemic, you know, have all your business gone and have everything burnt to the ground. So oh. there is a little bit of a collaboration there, yeah, but, you know, it wasn't that definitely wasn't on purpose. Um, and we do roasters work together all the time. I just I don't know if we could get what we want to get like by mixing. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. It's a good answer. Uh, well, that's amazing what you guys are doing for Boyers. That just you know goes to show like you can all work together, and I love that. So yeah, thank you. Oh, Rose to you guys. Thanks for doing that. That's awesome. Um, okay, so should we move on to the next beer here? We're kind of trying. Yeah. I think we were going to do save the best. Well, in my opinion, maybe the best for last, which would be chocolate. Yum yum. So we're going to do Applejack. Applejack. Next. So if you guys are new to beer baking coffee, um, we've been doing a lot of cereal beers. Uh, I think, well, cereal beers go way back, but our first ever beer baking coffee that I was a part of five years ago, Jason did a cinnamon toast crunch graham cracker porter. And I was like, this is the most amazing thing ever. And then when the pandemic hit, we were like, well, what are, is everyone's favorite cereals? Let's try to make them into beers. So we did, Grimes, which is Jason's favorite cereal. And then one of our other brewers, I think was like, uh, apple jacks are the best. Let's do apple. So I need to finish my beer Mosa. So cheers. <laughs> I know. I just like downed mine. Down guys. Cheers. You know, when it's appropriate. It's afternoon. We can chug a beer. Okay. Right. Saturday. Pandemic. It's a cinnamon apple ale. I actually have not tried this yet, but I hear it's really, really, really good. It's great. Good. That doesn't taste like a beer. Nope. <laughs> That's what everyone says. It really is like an apple juice or apple cider, which is amazing. Nope. It's it tastes like fall in like the best way. That's a good one. That actually is a really good idea. Like crisp apple cider. I've been buying it at the store. Mm -hmm. Oh, it smells delicious. Oh yeah, oh, so good. Good with the bacon too. But literally, beer and it tastes like a juice. How do you guys get the apple flavor in there? Like, what do you do? You know what you use, or this is actually the one I actually talked to Jason about the chocolate yum yum. I'm sorry, I'm asking yeah, all the. Like, you know how we have the chocolate flavor in there? I don't know about that one, but I don't know. So actually, maybe I can look it up. <laughs> all right. Well, I really like it. Have a new beer. Jason sends out like the beer. He has a beer Bible that has all the information on every beer that we've ever made. So he sends it all out. So I might be able to find it. So talk amongst yourself. Let me see what? if I can find Applejack. <laughs> it's so good. I love it. I want to. 
Um, Kylie, while I look for this, I have a question for you. Okay. What is the craziest thing that's ever happened to you in news? Like craziest story or oh. moment? The wildest thing that you've ever encountered? That's like three questions. <laughs> God, I mean, I feel like that could go a lot of different ways. Cause like, I feel like for me, I've had some really, I, you can answer it in like the craziest and the bad way and the craziest and the good way. I'll start with the craziest and the good way. I think one of the best things I ever got to do, um, I worked in Minneapolis for four years before this and I was a volunteer in a children's hospital at the time. And they were like, hey, we're looking for more series to do or whatever. And they talked to us about with the kids specifically, we had to wear these red vests and it was really important that we wore them. We went through training or whatever. And you know, we get to the end of training and they're like, you have to wear this vest because that's a specific color. The doctors have a color, the nurses have a color and the volunteers do. And you're the only people that the kids can kick out of the room and I was like what that's like what are you talking about and they were talking about like well these kids like they, they can't ask the doctors to leave or their parents or whatever but like that's their only sense of power that they have when they're in the children's hospital and so I went to my boss and I was like I have an idea for a series you might not like it I'm like I want to feature a different kid in a children's hospital every week I'm like but I don't want to talk about whatever weird disease they have I'm like I just want to feature this kid and my boss went okay like so sometimes it was the kid wanted to talk about why why are why they were in the hospital and sometimes it was hey i just want to talk about why i love soccer or why i love hockey like and so i got to do that for four years in minneapolis and it was one of the best things and maybe one of the hardest things i've ever been a part of but wow. that was one of my all-time favorites and i got to meet some of the best families and i still follow some of the kids like on social media like we still talk every now and then so that was really fun as far as like crazy weather goes i've been out covering tornadoes like after the fact blizzards, snowstorms. I've been in weird dust storms that popped up actually yeah. in Idaho. I think one of the craziest though was the the massive, the bomb cyclone that happened. And you're gonna have to forgive me because I feel like 2020 has skewed all of my sense of time. It wasn't this past year, it was the year before. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to remember when it was just really, really, really cold. No, no, no. It was, it was a massive, like, it was this one of the strongest blizzards that, that has ever come into Colorado. Okay. And that was pretty wild. And then more recently, this summer, we had what's called a derecho. I don't know if you guys remember this, but it was this wind event that tracked across far southwestern Colorado with 100 mile per hour winds all throughout the state in this huge line that kind of looks like almost like a bow. Hmm. And then it went into the Midwest and it kept going and it came into the front range and it was like, okay, like 10 minutes of this really fast moving storm. But it was one of the only derechos, that type of wind event that we've had on record in Colorado. Cause we've got about 130, 140 years of weather records. So, you know, it's stuff like that. That's really cool. So Weird cool. stuff is when like people see you on TV and then go, Oh, I know where you are and show up to your live shot and go, hi. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh it's so you know, I was thinking about that earlier. I was like, I was, you know, Kylie lives down the street from us, and I was like, she lives in our neighborhood down and around. Yeah, we won't say exactly where. Yeah, because well, it is you. You know, you're on television, and people know who you are, and that can create some weirdness. I guess. I never would think that's a thing, but it totally it is. It is. I either. either until I got in it, and it's so I've got a brother who's kind of a tech wizard, and so I've had a few like kind of funky things and nine news is really great about um if we have an issue with someone you know they'll they'll kind of take it up but like my address has gotten posted on the internet my phone number and so my brother's really good about like he'll go in there and like try and get it off as quickly as possible yeah which is really nice because like i grew up and i was like who would ever want to contact someone from the news and yeah it turns out there are a couple of those people out there huh so interesting yeah. um have you ever been i always think you know when you're watching i know we don't have uh, hurricanes in Colorado, but yeah. like we're watching like hurricane watches. Hurricanes are very, it's just interesting to me. I've all, I, I'm from Oregon and I lived in Colorado. I actually lived in Minneapolis for a year oh, um, in California. So I've never really been in a hurricane area, but I'm just very, it's so interesting to me to like watch these storms move in and like yeah. storm surge and just, I don't know much about it, but it's just interesting for me to watch. And you see these reporters that are like standing and they're like almost getting blown over. Yeah. I and mean, so you've been in these kind of crit for you it's more like snow weather right and i guess more snow yeah i'm kind of the same way where i've never lived and i would love to actually go and cover a hurricane i think that like sometimes as meteorologists we do sometimes get a little bit frustrated because sometimes things get like overproduced by people who aren't necessarily have that background in weather and like because you guys have seen the people who make fun of everyone on the internet where they're pretending like, or they're seeming like they're falling over and then someone walks behind them just fine. Right. I think like there's a good balance here, especially like in Denver, 
I feel like there's not a lot of sensationalism that happens among our meteorologists. Like we're all friends. All of us have the same goal of like, hey, we just want to get the information out there. But I mean, to cover a hurricane would be crazy. But yeah. you know, I've been, I've been like, in Minneapolis, you know, standing outside in 40 below temperatures and you're just like, why am I here? Like, <laughs> I the first time I ever drove in snow was when I had just moved to Minneapolis and it was like a the first no. time it was like a blizzard and I was driving it on the highway and there's like no one else on the highway. It was probably like nine or 10 PM or something. And my car just started fishtailing and I was literally like, I'm going to die here. No. <laughs> I I'm driving snow. I've never done this before. And obviously living through a minute. I lived your counter What? I was just you like, oh, done. Done. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I lived through it. So it's fine. But it was just crazy. That was, you know, the winters there are insane. So I feel like doing weather would be wild. I had a similar experience because I went to high school in Arizona. And so the first yeah. time I drove in snow was my freshman year of college. And I'm driving like my boyfriend at the time's Jeep and on I-70. And I'm like, hey, it says icy roads ahead. We're going skiing. And he's like, just keep going. Just go slow. And I was like, what? <laughs> I seventy is way scarier than just a freeway. Too. Coming out of I seventy, driving someone else's car with like a bunch of sleeping freshmen, and I was just like, "You guys trusted like the the girl from Arizona? Like, what's happening right now?" Yeah, growing up in Oregon, I drove in a lot of rain, so I'm like, "Yeah, whatever, I, that's fine." But once you get yeah, no, it's like, different. No, it's not. Yeah. So, anyways, that's fun. Uh, I love that. I'm coming. I will. Uh, Storm Watchers is like a show that I've seen some episodes of, and it's just like yeah. interesting. Like, or what was Tornado? Is that the show where they like follow the hurricane or the tornadoes, obviously, like into the eye? Twister, Twister. <laughs> you know, I don't know was right when I was. I, in wife, I, was I don't remember. I was in when I was in Minnesota. There was a siren as they're going off, and I was like, I don't know what the hell this is. I've never heard anything like this before. And someone's like, it's a tornado siren. <laughs> I was in a coffee shop in like uptown Minneapolis and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to die here. But <laughs> and like the rain was coming down like sideways and the winds. And I was like, I was like, am I in a tornado right now? And like the sirens going off, but I'd never experienced anything like that. So yeah. Yeah. Before Arizona, I grew up in the Midwest. I grew up with tornadoes. So like it was super common when we were kids. We'd be like, oh, there are the sirens again. Everyone to the basement. We had like a corner. Yeah, we, my mom had set out like games for us all to play. But it is like it's it's very scary. And I will say it's so funny. Even if I'm not working, if there's any sort of severe thunderstorm warning, tornado warning, my phone is blowing up from my friends texting me and being like, what do I do? And I'm like, get away from the windows. But here in Colorado, I mean, we do get, we actually get a decent amount of tornadoes. Most of them though are out over the Eastern Plains, which I think surprises people when they hear about Colorado and tornadoes. They're like, it's the mountains. But we get tornadoes in the mountains too. They're just mostly uh, smaller ones. So I guess like Kansas goes into, or no, excuse me, Nebraska goes into, like Kansas and Nebraska come into Colorado. and like the All Eastern Tornado Alley. Yep. So it starts on the Eastern Plains of Colorado. Because if you think about storm systems that go across the United States, a lot of them start right here because what happens is they get to the Rocky Mountains and they kind of compress and form. And then they get pushed out over like the Midwest and then eventually toward the East Coast. So whenever you see those massive storms that go over the upper Midwest or the East Coast, a lot of them started here in Colorado, which is super cool. From like, like you got nerdy with coffee. Like I get nerdy when it comes to me. My bachelor's degree in weather right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that was one of my questions I had for you. How did you get when you like growing up? You're like, I always want to be um, a reporter. I want to be a meteorologist. Like, how did you? How did you come into this career? Or was it something you always wanted to do? No, I really, I never even thought about doing it. And it was so funny because my parents were like, you should look at journalism. You love writing. And I was like, great. And so I went to see you. I was a direct admit to the journalism school and got some scholarships. So I was like, okay, I'll give this a try. And then while I was there, I did the sports broadcasting program, which anyone who knows me would laugh because I don't know anything about sports. But I, what I did was I did ski reports because I just wanted on air time. I was like, just get me on air. I just need to practice. I just want to get better. And people were like, Oh, you should do the weather. You should be a weather girl. And I did it. I cringed every time. Cause growing up, like for lack of a better word, I like weather girls were portrayed as the bimbos. Yeah. And they were the stigma. Yeah, they no, they totally were. And so I was like, no, I hate that. I hate that. I want to be a reporter. I want to be a war correspondent. I got to my first job in Idaho, started covering real news and realized that like, I don't have, I'm, I'm not tough enough to take it. Like I've got too big of a heart. Like I had to show up after like half a family had just passed away. And I was like, 
this is not for me. And so like, while I was figuring that out, I was doing weather and I kind of fell in love with it. But when I was growing up, I loved writing. And so I was like, I'm not a scientist. I can't do science. Like, that's not me. And then when I kind of started loving weather, I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to go back to school and give this a try. And I did. So I went back to school while I was working full time. I did like two classes every fall, spring, summer, and did all those meteorology classes, like did all thermodynamics, you know, when we're talking about statistical climatology, all that stuff. And not only enjoyed it, but did well in it and was like, oh, this is cool. So went and got that degree through Mississippi State and then went on to forecast, you know, in Salt Lake City and Minneapolis, which is, a, as you know, a huge weather market. Mm-hmm. And then finally was able to come back here. But I, I resisted it for so long. And thankfully, like, at, if you're familiar with Nine News, of course, you know, Kathy, one of the, you know, first chief. A female chief meteorologist in the country and so I had these amazing women that I looked up to and was like oh you're not just a woman who tells people the weather you're a scientist and you're badass while you're doing it so it was really fun that's such a cool story of how you got there and because meteorology like I again I don't know anything about it but from what I portray like you have to you do you have to have a totally different degree than just your regular journalism degree oh, totally different yep totally different classes none of it's the same there's no overlap when it comes to that so I'm lucky because I have both yeah, stories and whatnot, but yeah, there's no overlap. Oh, that's awesome. Devin, you should give yourself more credit. I bet you know more about weather than you think you do. Well, now I do because I spend all that time studying and I still kind of learn about it. But at the time, it, it definitely felt like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. And I, I kind of just like really focused in on learning those first five, six years of my career. I was like, I just want to learn everything. It was so fun. <laughs> I had amazing mentors. So what are all the places you've done news in? Because I know like as in news, you move around a lot, right? Because you basically move to, the, you start, start in smaller markets, yep. you move to bigger markets. So how many different places have you lived for, for your journalism? This I'm is this, by the way. Oh, no, you're going to the chocolate yum yum? Okay. okay, hold that question, finish up here. Okay, we're opening. Mm, chocolate yum Oh, yes. Okay, I can actually talk about this really quick before. Me too. I have, like, so many questions for you. I'm sorry. I feel like I hijacked your question. No, that was perfect. No. I, need to, I'm watching, I was out of beer, too. I'm watching the time here, so and I need to finish that. Um, okay, so Chocolate Yum Yum is a take on – oh, Maria has it up there um, – is a take on, obviously, our Princess Yum Yum, which is – Probably my all-time, not probably, is my all-time favorite Denver Beer Co. beer. The first year of Denver Beer Co. Yeah. And I interviewed, and Patrick and Charlie, your owners, asked me, um, what's your favorite craft beer trend? And I said, mm. this is one of my favorite things to talk about is, I said, I love a cider. And they just, like, started laughing. They're like, that's not beer. And I was like, what? Craft cider? Like, I love ciders. I was like, it's so good. Yeah. And all of my friends were like, you're applying for a beer company. Like you don't even like beer. Cause I would like without really like, I don't drink beer. Like beers, I don't like beer. And, but I, but uh, I think the line that I finally said at the end, I was like, look, you guys make amazing beer in Denver. Like everyone knows you. I was like, I know how to throw an amazing event and an amazing party. And I was like, you teach me about beer and I'll teach you how to throw a great event. And somehow that worked. And you know, five, almost five years later now. And I love beer. I love different, because I was just so used to like a beer was just like, I hate hoppy beers. I'll never touch an IPA unless it has fruit in it. Well, I will. I'll taste everything. Of course. But I'm, you know, I'm not big on hoppy beers. I'm not big on like really, really intense barrel aged beers, but I can appreciate it now. And I, but I love a sour. I love a fruit beer. Um, there's so many things that I've learned to appreciate. So when we first started, when I first started four and a half, almost five years ago, Princess Yum Yum was just a summer seasonal. So I started in March and Princess Yum Yum had just released. And it was like the only beer I drank up until it went away in October. And then I tried the pumpkin beer and I was like, okay. And I drank pumpkin beer and then that went away. And so like December hit and I was like, shit, like, I can't drink any of these beers anymore. Heavy <laughs> porters. And then uh, I tried the cinnamon toast graham cracker, cinnamon toast crunch graham cracker porter, and that one, you know, started going. So, uh, and then from there, I started trying more things, and I started appreciating more things. And we, you know, grow now. We do seltzers, and we actually have a hard iced tea on tap now. It's amazing. I just drank it today. So our portfolio is growing and but my taste in beer is growing. But I always will love Princess Yum Yum. And if you know me, I have a crazy sweet tooth. And so when Jason told me he was thinking about doing chocolate 
yum, yum. I was like, yes, let's do it. So I tasted this a few days ago. And if you smell it, if you're at home, where you just pour yourself, smell it. It smells so chocolatey. Mm -hmm. Can you smell the chocolate? Sure can. So good. And if you, then we can do that. We'll it's great. It's very refreshing. All right. You smell first, right? I, I got a quick question. What yeah. you, like, what's, it says Kolsch. Is this a Kolsch then? It is a Kolsch. So it, it, it actually took our regular Princess Yum Yum. And then they used cacao nibs and some chocolate syrup in and in the brew and added it to the brew. Do you know, like, can, can you tell me what a Kolsch is by chance? I'm, just, I'm asking the crappy some questions like that. But a Kolsch is a German style of beer. It's lighter. I know that. <laughs> I should be able to answer this better, but on the spot right now, I'm not going to be so sorry. <laughs> I'm um, just curious. It's a, I know it's a German style of beer. Okay. And it is in the, I don't know, I don't know, it's in, so there's, their beers are either lagers or they're ales. And a Kolsch is in the ale side. I should know, but I don't know. Nailed it. I'm not going to answer this. Again, uh, I nailed it? Sure. Oh, no. I, I, that wasn't a quiz. I'm just okay. pretending like you know okay. exactly what you're talking about. Uh -huh. I Googled it. I got it. Yes. The style of beer originating in Cologne, Germany. Germany. And it's bright and clear with a strong yellow hue. So right. That's the, the original Kolsch. The yeah, Kolsch. It is the ale family or the lager family? I don't know which one. Which family? Ale, ale or lager? I would, I would like lager. Oh, here we go. That's the second question. Oh, is it's an ale. Lager or lager? Oh. It's an ale. That was the second question on Google. Kevin, you were right the whole time. It's an ale. See? <laughs> You've been I thought it was good. I've learned a few things. Yep. <laughs> well, this is great. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Well, I normally have Jason at all these things and, you know, he just answers the questions and I listen, but if, you know, it's one of those things where like, if you listen, you retain X amount, but if you teach or talk or say you retain more. So I will always remember this now. <laughs> you, hey, you did great. That was very informative. I know that was awesome. You were 100%. What do you guys think about this uh, raspberry chocolate yum yum? I like it. I love it. I'm, I'm not like the biggest princess yum yum fan. I'm not a big sour mm. fan. Okay. This, this, I think the chocolate takes away kind of the sour part of it, mm -hmm. and it's a lot more drink, drinkable. It's sweet without being overpowering, and I like the notes of chocolate. So I'm a big mm -hmm. fan. Delicious. You yeah. mentioned sour, and that's why I asked about the, the cold style. Is it is this a sour beer as well, or is it? So it's sour? not a sour beer. This it's not sour. It's a fruit beer, um, so it's a fruit Kolsch. But it it's not, everyone kind of assumes it's going to be really sweet, and it's, it's not. not sweet um and it's actually funny one of our bartenders tasted this with us courtney and she was like you know i'm not a princess yum yum fan but i like chocolate yum yum because it's better Hi, oh, I feel. my dog came do you guys want to see her yeah yeah sours i struggle with and but i feel like every like brew person thinks sour is the, the you know the best <laughs> thing with sliced bread there you oh go. hi she's like 48 pounds <laughs> look at her she's like i'm here i'm having fun yeah. here Hi, can you speak? Can you speak? Can you howl for everyone? Oh. 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 She'll do it while she's in the air. But she'll speak. Yeah, Hardy, can you speak? Can you say, hello? She's very confused. Hello. <laughs> she's like, Mom, who are you talking to? What do you think of here? Hello. Do we like it? World's quietest people. Oh. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. Have to <laughs> She's going to be on my ass. Come here. Can you go, hello. 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 <laughs> I love it. When the, pandemic, when the pandemic was going on, we did the eight o'clock howl thing where everyone went in the backyard and howled. Yeah. But uh, she she would go crazy and she would howl for like 20 minutes straight. That's awesome, actually. That was super cool. Neighbors like, would be howling and people around. And like, so she would just hear it. And I don't, there's certain things that she'll howl for. Like she knows breakfast and dinner and she'll just yeah. immediately howling for that. Some of our friends, my brother's dog. Uh, she like no, their name is the name is Bergen, and she'll I'll be like, you want to go see Bergen, and she'll just start howling. It's really yeah. So a little bit of that, you know, made her a little famous there. Hey, we haven't had very many questions come in. 
Oh yeah, I kind of don't really, I usually say, sound off in the comments. So let's uh, wrap this up with a couple things. Number one is, I need everyone's favorite beers. So we had Brunchy McBrunch Face, Applejack, and Chocolate Yum Yum. What's your favorite? Oh, beautiful picture there. Uh, sound off in the comments. Tell us what your favorite is. I know. I feel like the three of us just asked ourselves a lot of questions this time. Oh, Taylor says Brunchy. Who else has a favorite? What is that? Kylie? Oh, chocolate Yum Yum? Chocolate Yum Yum. Tim? Oh, I got to Okay. A lot of pressure. I know. Okay, Brunchy. Because I think I can, like, pound this whole crawler, whereas maybe Applejack is, like, so taste forward that it's like too much not too much in a bad way but like i need to enjoy glass it's more beer crawler. and what about everyone in the background tim i know your wife and a friend are there hey guys you have a favorite? shout out your favorite beer I'm gonna have to go at home, tell us what your favorites are. Okay, and then the other thing is, do you guys have any last questions? Tim, do you have any last questions for us or comments? Kylie, do you have any? I know we've asked you a bunch of questions. This has been terrific. Uh, so fun. You know, both have brought just a you know good conversation. I, I really appreciate it. So it's been Kylie. It's been nice to get to know you a little bit. And Devin, it's of course always a pleasure. Thanks for always a pleasure, Tim. I know it's kind of fun. It, this this live stream felt very much. I mean, they all do, but like sitting around the table eating brunch, which was I so can't wait till we can actually like do it around a table again. So yeah, yeah. one day we will. Oh, there's my mom. <laughs> 15 kids and mom has watched all of them. Devin, send your mom some chocolate yum yum. Come on. Okay. Well, my mom is in Oregon. You can, you can come so, here. I'm doing a next week. Actually, it was just out there for my little brother's wedding. And uh, I flew because I didn't have as much time, but my, older brother drove from Colorado. He lives in Colorado. So he brought like, we brought like six cases of beer out there and we had some for the rehearsal dinner. And then we had, it was very small, like a, you know, pandemic wedding, but family. And anyway, so my mom has tons of beer. She just, we didn't, chocolate yum wasn't ready yet, but mom, we'll try to see if we can send you some. To order them from Oregon. Um, Tim, here's a question for you coming in. Uh, does Coda have any new roast coming? Yes, we do. Ooh, so that's a uh, new crop Sumatra. So really excited about that. That's scoring like 87 points, which is awesome for Sumatra. Um, we'll do a holiday blend uh, as we do every year. And that'll be, I'll probably launch that, I don't know, mid-November. When do you guys think is a good time to launch a holiday blend? I think, yeah, late November. Okay, late late, November. like Thanksgiving. November. Yeah. It's funny because, so this is something launching holiday, right? So I'm going to back up and talk about pumpkin for a second. So our pumpkin beers are out, but we actually launch our pumpkin beer. Oh, there's Caleb has them in his fridge right now. We actually launch it in August because to get it to the market and you have to make a certain amount, right? So it actually launches usually like August 10th, August 12th, August 15th. And we don't do a huge, whenever we launch a new beer, we do big marketing pushes. But for what we've learned with our pumpkin beers, we don't do a huge marketing push because we'll get so many people are like, it's August, like it's not fall yet. Uh, but so we put it out early. I don't know if you've been to any stores recently, but everywhere has Christmas stuff out. And then you get all the people. I, I was walking out of, I was at Michael's getting some uh, acrylic markers for our pumpkin event. And I heard a lady being like, oh my God, it's not even Halloween. <laughs> and all this Christmas stuff all over Michael's, all over Costco, like everywhere has it already. Sure it's exactly. totally, there are no rules. <laughs> There's no rules. Everything no rules. earlier and earlier. And here's my thought, like, like I, I was at the grocery store and they already have eggnog out. Yeah. Like, I love that kind of stuff. Like I'll eat pumpkin stuff year long. Right, so I think Starbucks launches their pumpkin spice lattes at the beginning of August now, and mm -hmm. either and now they do a pumpkin cold brew, which is thank goodness because it can be a hundred degrees out, and you can go get your pumpkin cold brew. Sure. So I would say, you know, you can launch it in November. All right, Tim, oh. do it, do it now. Get yeah. it out as soon as possible. I love even in going it because it, once January hits, you know, everybody's like, oh, I have to move on to the next thing. Yeah, yeah. I think well, I, I got to get to work. I think you can get the holiday blend out because holidays is Thanksgiving, right? And then people do their friends' givings like two or weeks before Thanksgiving. That's true. That's true. 
Yeah. So I'd say you get that out there. Okay. We need some holiday love this year. Just okay, yeah, I know. as soon as possible. I'm with you on that, man. I am with you on that. Riley, thank you so much for joining us. Tell yeah. everyone how they can follow along with you. I think we have, you know, you can follow oh. her on my news, her Instagram handle. I think we have up there, had up there earlier. Um, yeah. What's next? What's the newest thing for you? What work we see you? Um, still on weekend mornings. And then I just started a hiking blog because I'm hiking all the time. So I linked that on my Instagram and I call it the approachable outdoors because I'm not like the typical outdoorsy Colorado. And like, I like to go on a hike and be back in time for happy hours. So that's kind of the whole point of the, the hiking. Well, blog. A lot of people that are into that too. Real easy ones. <laughs> I think that's like the 99% of us, that's what we enjoy. It is, but like the little like 1% that's like, oh, you didn't go backpacking for 15 miles is like the loud crowd. And I'm like, no. No, I, I didn't want, do that. I want to shower and go to Denver Beer Company. I like to <laughs> with me on the hike. That's my go-to. Yes. <laughs> one backpack this year and literally brought like eight beers in my pack for one night. Some, why does beer taste better on top of mountain? I don't know. Wait, Everything true. tastes better on top of mountain or... I would, everything tastes better when you're in the wilderness. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is, but it's delicious in the wilderness. It's a thing. So take your beers on your hikes. I will. Well, Kylie's blog. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. Thank you guys so much. Thank Just you. a couple of notes for up and coming. We have our pumpkin patch continued at our Nevada next weekend. If you're trying to get a pumpkin and paint it and drink some beers, we have our socially distant table reservations. We have two up and coming uh, bike in movies at Camworks, walk in, drive up, walk your stuff in. Uh, we are doing Hocus Pocus next Saturday. Those tickets are live. Oh and my then God. next Friday, excuse me, the 23rd Friday, uh, Hocus Pocus. And then we are actually going to screen Coco, a little cerveceria flare um, on the 30th. And then we watch for news. We're going to do our, and I mentioned our doggy costume contest, my favorite event. I'm so so sad, but we are going to do a virtual dress up your pet, tag us, and we're going to pick some winners with some awesome prizes. We're going to yeah. have that stuff next week. So uh, still dress up, stay home with your pets, walk them around the block, whatever. Uh, stay safe, everyone. We love you. We can't wait till we throw a massive bash to celebrate uh, our GABF medals. Again, congratulations to Jason and the whole brew team and all of our team at Denver Beer Co. and Cerveceria. I love you. I'm so lucky to be a part of such an amazing team. So congratulations to everyone. Thank you guys for all oh, there. Last year, we got Patrick and Charlie and everybody up there. Uh, we'll get a big picture with the medals uh, once we all can do that again. So we're so excited. Thank you guys. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Kylie. Thank you, Maria, in the background, running this, throwing up all the questions and all the pictures. We love you guys. Have a great day. You Enjoy too. Saturday. See you soon. Bye. Bye.